Good morning all. Today I thought I'd uh, build this, which is a little kit. Um, it's kind of like, I don't know, a roulette wheel or something like that. Uh, but it's only got 10 LEDs, not 37, is it, for roulette? Now it's a pretty simple kit. There aren't many parts here. The complication is that it uses surface mount components. So it's got a surface mount 555 timer and a surface mount uh, 4017 1 of 10 decoder thing and then there are a few surface mount resistors there's a surface mount diode there but then the red LEDs around the outside and the switch and the capacitors are through hole the uh, 555 and the 4017 are kind of manageable size although their leads are very small but uh, some of these resistors are absolutely microscopic. And then there's also this diode, which is kind of like a normal uh, 1N4148, but it doesn't have leads on the end. It has these flattened off disks. And this diode is called a MELF. So a MELF component is a metal electrode leadless face. Uh, that's a close up of it. Although that same acronym is also used to uh, indicate that most end up lying on the floor. So here's the kit on eBay. Now like this one, I thought um, I was buying one with full-size uh, components here, through-hole resistors and dual inline chips. But the one I ended up getting was the surface mount. But anyway, this was uh, only $2.08, uh, free shipping. And this came from the Kingful Electronic Company. So let's try soldering one of these uh, 470k resistors. Now these things always fall the wrong way up, so I've got to try and turn it so that it's the right way up. I mean, it doesn't actually matter, you could solder this on upside down, but it's nice to be able to see the uh, marking on it, see the value. So I'm just going to move and maneuver that into position and then attempt to solder it into that pet place. Right, let's see how we do if I attempt to solder one end of the resistor. And that happens. So what's happened here is that the component has tombstone. You can see the 470K there, 474 is the marking on the resistor. And it's sitting up on one end because the solder has a sort of um, viscosity and it just pulls that component up on one end. You can see there that it's standing up off the board. So I'm gonna have to remove that and find a different way of soldering that. Now this right hand pad here, this one here, now has a little blob of solder on it um, which should help me attach this. Now like most people I've only got two hands so I'm going to move, maneuver this into position and then I'm going to hold it down with this cocktail stick and then bring the soldering iron in. Let's bring that in and with it held down just got to maneuver it into position first. I should blue tack this board to my mat really. Quite difficult getting that in position. Let's hold it down and solder that end. Now it's tipped around at a bit of an angle but um, I think that'll do as long as um, the ends of the component are lying on their respective pads and there isn't any possibility of a short underneath there then we're good. So now I don't need the cocktail stick anymore. If I turn this round I can uh, use the solder in my left hand and the iron in my right hand and just put a little dab of solder on there. Did that flow? I think so, yeah. So let's see if I can make a better job of this 10k resistor. So what I'm going to do is just put a tiny amount of solder on the right hand pad, just enough to uh, get the component to adhere um, while I soldered the other end. So there's the 10k resistor, it's a bit square this time, let's try and hold it down with the cocktail stick and just touch that end with the soldering iron. Now I'm not really soldering that end, I just want it to stick so that when I solder the other end, which I'm going to do now, let's turn it around, it won't lift up in that sort of tombstone style. So let's solder that end now and then I'll turn it back round and go back to the first side and complete that joint like that. That's a much better fitted component than the 470k which is at a bit of an angle. 
So same technique with this other 470K. And I might just pre-tin the board a bit there. I might as well do that diode as well while I'm at it. And possibly uh, corner pins of these two ICs. Right, so now let's move the 470K into its position. Trying not to flip it up the wrong way around. That's close enough. Just touch that end. That's actually quite a nice joint there. I might leave that one. Turn it round. And solder the other end. Okay. Now let's try this MELF diode. Now you can see because it's got these disc ends, it just rolls. It's almost impossible to get in position without it rolling. So. <laughs> It's not going to be easy getting this on the pad and then rolled into place. What I might try is putting the cocktail stick on top and then just drawing it back a little bit while I put the iron on. Let's give that a try. It's not very good because it's kind of moved off to that side. Let's get some tweezers on it now. So I've got some tweezers which are sort of normally closed on there. Oh, it's tombstoned a bit. Let's just get it on. Right, that is now at least lying in its position. Um, I also checked that the band is on the, uh, what would that be, the cathode side. So now I can turn that around, solder the other side, and it shouldn't move. And then come back around and redo the first side. It's not a bad joint, but it could do with just being improved. Okay. Well, the diode is on. So now let's try this 555 timer. Um, you can see that there's a little notch on the silkscreen uh, diagram, which indicates pin one. Pin one's actually this one up here. I'm gonna be soldering pin eight. Um, there's a little dimple next to pin one, which is there. That bar also indicates that it goes next to that notch. So all those things indicate that I've got this the right way round. I wouldn't wanna solder this on the wrong way around, that would be a bit of a disaster. So it's just a case again of maneuvering this into position. And then when I've got it about right, and of course because I've pre-tinned and soldered this pad, it's slightly raised and that's giving me a slight problem in getting this thing lined up. That's not bad. I think I might go with that. So now I just want the merest touch with the cocktail stick to hold this component down, trying not to move it. And that pin eight seems to have just dropped into the solder. The alignment seems quite good. All the feet are on their pads. So now I can just go and solder maybe this other end and then turn it around. And perhaps I'll start with the outer two just to sort of uh, get it adhered. You don't need a lot of solder on this. That's rather an ugly joint. And then um, complete the remaining legs. That one, that one. Flip it around. That one. I've got rather a lot of solder on my iron now, so I should give it a clean, but those eight joints are made. Um, I'll just do a bit of a close-up of that. Well, it's not beautiful, but uh, all eight legs are soldered on and uh, there aren't any sort of uh, solder bridges running between legs, so that's good enough. Now for the big 14-pin chip. Is it 14-pin? No, 16-pin. Right, I've tacked on uh, this pin here where I pre-tinned the pad. But the whole thing is twisted slightly, so I'm just going to sort of try and tip it round, but without breaking that very, not very well soldered joint. I just want to get that in the right place. That looks about right. And then I'll solder the opposite corner, and then the thing shouldn't move around too much when I complete all the other joints. Where's my solder gone? Here it is. Okay, let's solder this far corner. Okay, that's good. Now I can uh, finish all the joints because that chip's not going to move now. Mm. 
Now the solder's building up on my iron, so I need to get that off on the sponge. Okay, that's pins one to eight. Let's now do pins nine to 16. Go the other way this time, just for fun. Now I've got to lift my iron a bit here because the 555 is in the way. And the camera's in the way a bit as well. Now I think the final surface mount component is this uh, transistor here. Uh, it's in this little plastic thing, so I'm gonna have to try and get the covering off just with a knife. There it is. Tip the component out, and there's the little transistor. Let's get that on the board. Actually, I'll just pre-tin one of these pads, might as well do the big one which is that top one there. Hmm, rather a lot of solder on there. So the same thing, hold it down and just, oh, it twisted around a bit. Now I wonder if I can twist that back with that leg connected. The leg will bend a bit, but it shouldn't matter too much. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. Okay, let's solder these bottom two legs. Now I don't know which is collector base emitter on this, doesn't really matter because the board is all laid out uh, physically, shows me what uh, the orientations are. Gosh, these pins are very, very tiny. But I think that's on, good. So that's all the surface mount components uh, in place. Got the 555 timer here, 4017 there. Uh, this little J6 transistor uh, is in this position here, diode and three resistors. This one's a bit wonky, but I'm sure it'll be fine. So all the rest are through hole. Now it's just a case of getting the uh, LEDs the right way around. Um, I think the flat edge on the LED goes to the flat bar. That's the cathode. I'm pretty sure that's right, yeah, because that's the side you'd normally put to ground. And then if you feed current this way, yes, that'll light it up. So that would appear to be the right way around. I might just do one and actually power this up before I put the others in. But I'll need to put these capacitors in and the switch and this little two pin connector for power. So 47 microfarads, that's this one here. Uh, negative is there, so that's the short pin. The long pin is positive, so I'll put that through the hole that way round, solder that one on. Uh, so for this one, I'm just gonna use a piece of blue tack to kind of hold that in place while I solder the pins on the bottom. That seems to be done. So the capacitors are in, and uh, now I just need the switch. Now that will only go one way. I don't think it'll go this way. No, the pitch is wrong for that. So it'll only go this way. Let's put the legs in. That snaps into place. So that's a relatively easy thing to uh, attach. Let's solder that. So just the LEDs to go. Now I've made up a little um, cable with these DuPont connectors um, at this end and a little uh, connector there, I've put some uh, heat shrink sleeving on there. So that's actually now powered up and I was just experimenting with these LEDs and earlier I said that the little flat on the LED should go to the uh, line on the marking here, but actually that doesn't work if you put it that way around. If I just put that in and hold it, press the button, nothing happens. But if I flip that round, and you can see that um, I'm getting pulses on that LED. So the flat of these LEDs is kind of on the wrong side. Um, so what I did was I got some uh, green LEDs, which I had lying around to compare them. But on the red ones, the flat is on the long leg. And on the green ones, the flat is on the short leg. So a bit of a mystery, but um, probably the easiest way of doing it is to just put it in. Now it's the short leg goes to the cathode, it would appear. And that certainly seems to flicker. In fact, I can put a couple of those in 
and just hold it and you get an impression of how this thing is going to work but that just uh, gives me the confidence now to start soldering those in. So I've put uh, four LEDs in the board, some blue tack to hold them in while I flip them over and solder them. So let's solder those now. Yeah, so sometimes they use LEDs that were rejects from a batch. So these have probably been rejected because the plastic casing has been put on the wrong way round. And that's why they've ended up in this low cost kit. So it's all, always worth checking and not relying on the markings on the component. Although having said that, of course, I relied utterly on the markings on all the uh, diodes, transistors and ICs. Oh well, it worked out. And then just cut these. Good. And uh, just check again with the battery connected that everything looks good. Well, that seems to be flickering. I presume it goes round in a circle. And then uh, it's quite nice because it seems to slow down and then stop. So I guess one of the capacitors is, is doing the slow down thing. So that's it, finished. I've uh, completed the board, all the components, surface mount and through hole and all the LEDs are on there. Now they did give me one spare red LED and a spare 103, which is 10K resistor. But uh, let's put the power on and see if I feel lucky. So this is quite fun, you uh, press the button and it kind of rotates round, gradually slowing down and then stops on one of ten. So let's have a bit of a gamble. Let's bet everything on lucky seven. Come on seven. Oh, cheerio.